Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jessie Leons. This edition's top stories, contacts of the 27th recorded COVID-19 case test negative for the novel coronavirus. UNICEF aids the Ministry of Education in providing psychosocial support to young students. And the island's Governor General is the newest member of the Rotary Club of St. Lucia. Investigations into the 27th case of COVID-19 recorded in St. Lucia are continuing by the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar-George says contact tracing is ongoing, but thus far, all contacts of the individual that have been tested are negative. On receipt of the notification from the Ezra Long Laboratory, the confirmed case was immediately isolated and contact tracing commenced. The investigation consisted of interviews, contact tracing, screening and testing as required of all the possible contacts. These contacts included the passengers from the flight seated in proximity to the case, that is two rows in front and two rows to the back, port personnel, taxi driver, the hotel employees and the guests. The tests done in all of the contacts of the visitor thus far are all negative. Investigations and contact tracing by the health team at the hotel on Wednesday, September 9, 2020 has indicated that the transmission risk was low. The adherence by the hotel's management and staff to the recommended protocols resulted in low exposure during the limited period of his stay. On Tuesday, September 8, 2020, St. Lucia recorded the 27th case of COVID-19. The 27-year-old male visitor arrived in St. Lucia on Sunday, September 6, 2020. On the evening of Wednesday, September 9, 2020, he was repatriated to the United States via private airline. Dr. Belmar George reiterates the need for vigilance and compliance with established protocols. As more sectors open and restrictions are reduced, the public is advised as always to take the necessary personal responsibility to protect themselves and family. We continue to increase our surveillance to reduce the risks such as the illegal entry at the borders, breaches to home quarantine and the non-adherence to protocols. We continue to advise on the maintenance of the standard recommendations for infection prevention and control which include regular hand washing with soap and water or alcohol-based hand sanitizers when soap and water may not be available, and to cover your mouth and nose with disposable tissues when coughing and sneezing. We appeal to everyone to continue supporting our national effort to minimize the threat of COVID-19 on our island. St. Lucia has recorded a total of 27 confirmed cases of COVID-19 with zero deaths. A total of 7,391 tests have been conducted to date. The Ministry of Health and Wellness informs the general public that for persons traveling outside of St. Lucia and requiring a PCR test for COVID-19 can access those services at the Crosley Polyclinic and the Viewfort Wellness Center. Swabbing for the PCR COVID-19 test will be available at the two centers on Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The cost of the PCR test is U.S. $100 or EC $267 to be paid at the Groselet Polyclinic or the Viewfort Wellness Center. Persons are also advised to walk with a valid form of identification, that is your ID card, when accessing services at the Groselet Polyclinic or the Viewfort Wellness Center. It is recommended that persons come in at least three days, that is 72 hours, before a scheduled travel date. All persons coming to conduct business at the Groselet Polyclinic or the Viewfort Wellness Center must wear a mask before entering the facilities. All hands will be sanitized with an alcohol-based solution. The Ministry of Health will continue to take the necessary measures to ensure the health and safety of all staff and patients during the COVID-19 pandemic. For more information, please call the Ministry of Health at 468-5309. The British Virgin Islands, Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago are among countries in the region that are tightening measures to combat the pandemic as cases continue to climb. Here's Michelle Nurse of CARICOM News Time. The British Virgin Islands went into hard lockdown from the 2nd of September until the 16th of September. That means that residents must remain within the confines of their home 
between a minute after 1 p.m. each day and 5 each morning. The limited hours of movement are for essential trips only, such as purchasing groceries or medicine or taking limited exercise. From the 1st of September, Guyana reverted to its 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. curfew. The curfew for the past couple of weeks was from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. And as part of measures to ensure strict adherence to COVID-19 protocols, charges will be imposed on individuals who fail to wear a mask in public spaces. Guyana's airports will also remain closed to all incoming international flights, with some special exceptions. The measures are to remain in full effect until the 30th of September, 2020. Over in Trinidad and Tobago, failure to wear a mask will also attract a penalty. All in-house dining at restaurants and bars, food courts and malls is suspended and beaches, rivers, gyms and places of worship are closed. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development has presented a psychosocial support resources to district councillors supplied by UNICEF. The materials are to support young students who are adversely impacted by various stressors caused by COVID-19. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer officially handed over the materials. The packages that each child will receive is part of a response. It would give them something tangible in terms of a mask, something that they can use, but there are affirmations on those masks. There is a, there is a doll, there's a stress doll, there's a ball as well. There are quite a few things in that little package and all of that is complements UNICEF and in collaboration with our district education officers and more specifically our district councillors who have been part and parcel of this process. Coordinator of Guidance Counseling, Joycelyn Eugene, thanked UNICEF on behalf of all school counselors for partnering with the education sector in St. Lucia in order to direct attention to the younger ones who, like adults, are attempting to cope with the challenges of COVID-19, particularly on family and school life. I want to appeal to the parents particularly to allow the children some time to play to you know, use the items that are in the bag because it is to help them ease some of the anxieties and some of the concerns that they may have as we have been going through this COVID period. On behalf of the district councillors who are here with me, they are, have been the ones who work diligently with our primary school students. And they, together with their district education officers, have been planning on how we can alleviate some of the stress that the students would have been going through with the, new, the transition back into school. So this is also a gesture to assist some of the students with this, with this transition. Um, we have school counselors in the secondary school, so we have gone through preparing bags for grades 1 to 7, and so some of the students in the lower school will also receive some of the tangible items to assist them. This, of course, would be one phase of our efforts in helping students settle into the new academic year in a manner that is going to be um, that will be helpful for them, that will relieve some of their tension, some of their stress, and will allow them to be successful despite some of the challenges that they face during COVID. Coordinator of Guidance Counseling in the Ministry of Education there, Joycelyn Eugene. Governor General Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack has accepted an invitation by the Rotary Club of St. Lucia to become an honorary member. The invitation was made during a call upon the Governor General by Rotary District Governor Lyle Chase, along with Assistant Governor Charles Serrier, District Secretary Soraya Warner Gustav, President Lethan Khan, and Chairperson Everest Shamari. Details in this report. Rotarian Lyle Chase has ascended to the prestigious position of District Governor, creating history. It is the first time that a St. Lucian is serving as governor for District 7030, which is a grouping of 72 clubs with a membership of more than 2,200, spanning 17 territories from St. Kitts Nevis in the north to French Guiana, Suriname, Aruba, Bonaire and Curaçao in the south. Assistant Governor for St. Lucia, Charles Seri, says District Governor Chase has an impressive service record that has brought about change throughout the years. 
he joined the Rotary Club of St. Lucia in December of 1983. And he was president in the year 1988-1989. In 1992, he, he felt he should grow a little bit more, so he opened another club, the Rotary Club of Grosley. Um, and he was the first inaugural president, and they had a unique distinction in that they allowed women into Rotary, which something which um, the other clubs at the time were not allowing. So he's a, he's a trailblazer as usual. The recently installed district governor is credited for ensuring the sustainability of Rotary by starting a satellite club for the youth in 2017. Noting the success of Rotary International in eradicating polio in all but two countries of the world, Governor Lyle Chase is keen on replicating that health success in the region. A childhood obesity prevention program is at the top of the agenda. Chase explained the importance of the program. Childhood obesity is the genesis of many of our non-communicable diseases. Diabetes, um, hypertension, even things like depression and cancer um, are, are rooted in childhood obesity in many cases. And in the Caribbean area, over 40 to 45 percent of our adolescents are obese. And that figure has come from 5 percent within the last 20 years. St. Lucia's Governor General, His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack, lauded the Rotary Club for its commitment to community and pledged support to the agenda of District Governor Lyle Chase. The work that Rotary is doing cannot be put in a scale with any work that is being done anywhere for Rotary not to tip the scale. I'm particularly moved by, apart from everything else, by the plan to take the hundred or so people who have gone astray of the streets. We can refer to them as Christ would himself, as the least of our brethren. They are our brethren. And I believe it would be one of the greatest jobs that Rotary would have done for St. Lucia. District Governor Lyle Chase has also committed to pursuing peace and literacy during his term. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. Up next, we have a Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Quayal. Cut them loose. The anxieties, the worries, open up to possibilities. Accept the uncertainties and Cut them loose. The bitterness, the hopelessness. Plant a seed of hope in your mind. It will grow and flourish in time. Hold on a little longer. Life encourages you to grow. You have so much to offer. Look, tomorrow is waiting to say hello. Don't give up on yourself. Instead, reach out for help. Perhaps it's time to reach out to someone. Call the Health Helpline 203 toll-free anytime to speak to a professional. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Ta Jesse, Monsieur Madame Department Kenny West pour information à gouvernement cette fois-ci GIS et télévision nationale PIA NTN Capozato Nouvelle à Creole Pozato Primus Hutchinson 
le chef du business et l'autre business qui a continué pour profiter car ça trouvé l'argent prêté hot box c'est ici ça qui a venu possible par une agence de crédit hot organisation c'est du pays caribé là box c'est ici c'est une des institutions finances pour ces agréments là et puis corporation initiative là c'est un effort pour essayer à battre pèse maladie corona qui a porté à ce secteur business en région particulièrement ti business ek lot ki pa ko rive an pozisyon yo ja tou yo ki za twe avanse kon les ot principal rezon ki bak sete si ka antwe an jimnaz sala e pi korporasyon de fasilite ko edi organizasyon se de pi karib la se pou ese etabli proje sala pou ende sekte ti business ek lot business ki pa ko rive an degwe se pli go business an se pi sete si si lon direkte ekzekatif pou korporasyon ko edi sala madam kamen gomez trig Initiatif la ka o fè garantisman de 75% lajan prete an de gwe de 300 mil dola. Sis pe yon rejouan ki ka patisipe an poje ya ka yon resevwe asistans sa la de pi yon kalifye. Yon se Antig, Dominik, Lagrinad, Saint Kitts ex Nevis, Sebe San ek Lagrinadien, ek Setlisi. Madam Trick de ki Setlisi se premye pou ambrase initiatif la, initiatif sa la, ek se trawe yon aja trouve etwene pou sa kapab pou ofè servis la. Jewe debekter pou bak set lisi pou li mouman, M. Medford Francis, avwe ki bank la sap degwe twa kasman ki sete biznes pe yi aja espiyansi pou prezante divers garantisman pou sa kalifye pou touve yon loun ek osi kom yon ka kontoune pou opwe an ba maladi korona, bank la ka awwe sa twes epotan pou ydi ek plase sete biznes la a de opposisyon pou kapab pou kontoune opwe M. Francis di osi, magwe sa se yon gwan fason des asistans pou ti biznis. Kat mem, se fo se met biznis sa la kopon ki an ba agreman sa la. Se biznis ki ka fe pou fi pa pli ba ki 2 milyon dola pa lane ek ka employe pa plis ki se kat travaye ka y trouve akseptans. Se biznis sa la ni osi pou ka opwe apipwe 2 pou 3 lane e pou ka pote yon bo repitasyon an fason yon ka opwe. Se bizin sa la ki ka y trouve de gwe asistans pou pote la jan an ba agreman sa la ka y aden yon mer pozisyon pou fe pli pou gwe e kose kontribisyon pou devlopman set li si. Le eploye ki engaje yon fason pou sambli e pou pare pou dwi agrikol an marketing board a da yon plime pozisyon apwe sa pou kodwi travay yo top plime. Sa se apwe Minister de Agriculture te organize yo ek pou yo suiv yon spesyal etwenman. Se patisipan te pwen pa de yon seremoni a finisman etwenman sa la. Kote yo apwen manye pou sambli pou dwi agrikol a fason ki pa kay pose domaj pou se pou dwi a. Etwenman ki diwe pou si simen se te pou fe se patisipan kapab pou twe te se pou dwi a an degwe etenasyonal ek pou empouve produksyon agrikol an set le si. Konsultan de proteksyon ek sa te manje an peya, la se Thomas Edmond, ki kondwi se etwen masa la, eksplike importans pou chen manje an bon fason de sante. Osi importans se ou se abikon, se moun vle manje produi fwe, me de le se manja ou touche manje ap, manja ou mette an bret la, an yaw chaye, man yaw men transport de be, transport la, ou pot yaw si sal, si net, ka implike diziz pou pou vini asou manje ya, ek pou fwen mou mou lalat. So, yon te bon pou mwen jwen opportunite sa pou pou pale pi moun marketing board as pou man yaw pou fe manje ya yon ka vwen ek pak bon pou moun manje la yo achete fon marketing board. Selon M. Edmond, a prezan, les ofisye marketing board ka y fe asewe ki tout se podwi fortifyan pou moun sa achete. An siyans la dat, yo ka y bay se moun nan, a siyans la dat, se yo ka achete fom yo a, bon, e ki pa ka fe yo malad. So, moun ke vye vini achete fon marketing board, chak la yo vle se podwi sa. Etwenman, te pwe kou vendredi, le 4 zem jwen mat septem, 2020. Dipatman ki wesko sa pou developman sostenab, ja plane pou pwen demanche, pou chache fason, pou menaje plimè plan ek viv dlo 
tes animaux à cette ci qui est portable pour tenir les événements sanis of ministère ka kweki bon management c'est ressource ça là ça hausse bénéfice économique pays là pour ressource ça là la jani yon décision pour implémenter yon projet de ménagement de l'environnement mondial ça c'est l'environnement mondial qui est financé projet à cap placer attention en façade sud soleil le vent et qui est capable pour établir développement économique qui est sustainable et qui tient une façon de bonne santé pour le système de l'environnement, ses plans et ses animaux, et qui a aussi porté bon bénéfice de l'environnement international. Il y a un plus important en projet de cela, c'est l'éducation publique et aussi la participation. C'est le réseau qui doit être des jours ateliers en relation publique et communication, et puis il y a qui est dans le pour développer une façon de communication qui est très effective. Alan Regis, qui a facilité à Chile à déclarer que pendant la discussion concernant la façon de management, la restauration et la réhabilitation, qui a été très technique, en fait, ça, il a affecté directement les résidents en face de cette ci Alors, il est très critique que les résidents jouent un rôle, avec un grand rôle, pour faire possible pour ces communes pour le contrôle des projets. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé nouvelle là, monsieur, madame. Je vous remercie autant. Pour qu'on regarde, mon cas, il y a une invitation. Je ne peux pas me considérer comme ça fait la vie. Je vais présenter une autre nouvelle. Ah, quoi, alors, pour ça, mon cas, je vais présenter Jesse. Merci, Appeal Primus. Well, that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or our YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leon signing off for now, but do stay tuned for more programming on the NTN station. Goodbye.